So this second browser that I'll be using simulates a, you know, a user on a different machine that's also looking at this shared data. Um, Okay, so the UI is not very interesting. It's just a simple table, but that's not the fun part. So here, let's imagine you're watching like stock quotes or some kind of uh, piece of data that's kind of up on a dashboard. And uh, using some other application, like maybe SQL Plus, you go in and um, add a new department. So Insert into depth values uh, 99 the demo. And commit, of course. So after you commit, I've got my timer set at about 10 seconds. So within some span of 10 seconds, not sure why that flashed over there. Should have flashed. Uh, I see the new piece of data in those browsers. If I update uh, depth set uh, name equals E name uh, where dep node in and report. Oops, sorry, what did I do? Okay. No hands on the people. <laughs> Seems like Chrome's faster than I guess it's timer got updated. So it doesn't have the little twinkling effect that you might have seen in Frank's talk, uh, which are ADS streaming uh, infrastructure allows, but we're working on trying to make that work. But for an application that does need to have like uh, a type of dashboard that's updated without user interaction, this simple technique can be something that uh, proves useful to you. I'll publish along with the slides the, the various different projects I'll be showing as part of the talk. So what did you do? So basically, the, I used an auto-refresh view object which can only work if it's in a shared app module. I set the data control usage to use the shared configuration, so my page was looking at a shared app module view object. And then I pull the server, and the only kind of interesting tweak that required a little Java code was uh, I overrode this method that gets called when the database tells us the data has changed, and I just keep track of the system current time that the VO got re-executed so that the UI can say, oh, well, I still have the same last query time. I'm not going to do anything. But, oh, now it's a new last query time, TCR the table, and the table retains. So you can analyze the code when you download the example. OK, we'll look next at task flows. Uh, Oracle Apps uses bounded task flows as the primary unit of everything for organizing their UI. So everything that shows up in the screen other than the, the UI shell is a bounded task flow that appears as a tab in this UI shell that they have. Um, the, it's also the main unit of granularity for ADF security, so that you don't have to go and secure each individual page in the flow. You can just say, you need these privileges to be able to run this whole flow. So if you haven't gotten too deep into uh, task flows, because it seems sort of like you know, the same old stuff as page flows from, from struts or earlier versions of JSF, I highly encourage you to delve in and look at some of the interesting features like the ability to invoke code when the task flow starts. That's the way you can set up, you know, invoke your app module method that will set up all the, the, the VOs correctly for being used in this task flow. Uh, you can, I don't have a router pictured in this uh, drawing, but you can use routers to uh, customize how the flow goes. So it's just a very uh, handy facility that uh, has proven to be of great use to Oracle Apps. Another uh, anti-pattern that uh, you should check your applications for, because it would be second nature if you've done any development in 10.1.3. In 10.1.3, there was not any way in the JSF page flow to cause code to execute. So what we would have to do to cause some initialization logic was at the beginning of a page in the page depth, we would add an invoke action, which was up in the executable section of your page depth. And based on evaluating the refresh condition, it would cause something to happen if it was the first time that page was rendered. 
So it was one of the most complicated, uh, most uh, incorrectly used features. So we like were looking for anything we could do to get rid of it. Um, and so the alternative now in 11G is that you can see it on your diagram. You drop a method call activity in your task flow. You drop your action on top of that method activity. And you can actually see and document what's happening instead of it being hidden in this little line in the, the page depth that nobody ever thought to look at. So basically, you never use the invoke action in 11G, except for in an unbounded task flow where you don't really have the ability to have a method call activity invoke before you render the page. But uh, there you can still use invoke action. And there's a new property called initial render that is supposed to work correctly for that. I generally do everything with bounded task flows and use the method call activity to avoid this problem. Many problems I've debugged in apps where people would say, oh, my page is super slow. It was because they had several invoke actions that were calling execute query on every single click. So I click on a row of a table, and the table would re-execute, and I, you know, reorder a column, and the table would re-execute. And every single trip to the server, because of that invoke action, was like saying, "Please re-execute the query. Please re-execute the query." And so, using the method call activity, it only happens when you go and route through that. Yeah. Should have said the initial render is false or true. Oh, you're good. You're right. Yeah, sorry, they re flip flop the logic on the post back. So, yeah, sorry, this should say true. I'll fix that before I post the slide. Yes, it is the initial render rather than not being the post back. Good eye. OK, so next I'm going to explain a couple of interesting things about how transactional task flows behave uh, because it's important to understand how many different app modules are involved, how many database connections are involved, uh, because you might think. I should always just set isolated. That way, I'm sure that the thing that I call will never mess up what I'm what I called it. But when you set the data control scope of isolated, uh, that basically will use a completely separate root app module. It'll have a separate connection to the database from the the app module that was in the calling transaction. Sometimes that's exactly what you want, but you should know that's what you're getting and choose that that's the right thing uh, rather than end up having. You know, wondering why your database just told you you hit your max sessions limit because on every page you need several connections per request uh, by using the, the data control scope in an incorrect way. Another interesting thing that occurs when you're using, let's say, a task flow called manage employees, and it calls a task flow called modify employee to edit a given employee's data. And let's say while you're editing an employee, you need to create a new department that doesn't exist yet, so you call another third task flow called create department that, pop, that lets you add a new department. If you use the shared data control scope along with requires transaction, then what happens is the, 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 the app module we used by the new task flow actually gets nested automatically inside the existing app module so that you only still have one connection to the database. And that kind of nesting is happening for you automatically by the framework. And it just uh, just occurs whenever these two properties are true. Share data control scope, and they're sharing the transaction. The nested guy shares the transaction. Also be aware, it's a powerful feature to be able to do some work in this nested task flow and then be able to roll back to where you were before you called it. And that's supported by a save point feature that is enabled by default. But of course, the save point takes a snapshot of what you've done and saves it somewhere. It's a trip to the database to write it. And so if you know in your application that you're never going to use that rollback feature, there's a property called no save point that you can save to true, set to true that will disable doing that. So you don't waste time writing out a snapshot, an XML snapshot that you'll never actually uh, make use of. OK, in the interest of time, I think I'll skip that. The disk demonstration is something that uh, was one of the Oracle Magazine articles that I wrote about uh, transactional task flows. And uh, if we have time later, I'll come back and do it. But. So Oracle Legal makes me show this slide. So don't base any uh, purchasing decisions on the next thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is coming in the release that Ted Farrell talked about in his keynote, our patch set one release. So what we realized was that customers were having a hard time understanding why uh, bounded task flows were a good idea in some cases. And it was often because they were missing the UI shell that would easily allow